this is like the prime rib of the flathead. If I'm gonna eat some while I'm out here, I'm going to uh, take the prime stock. Well, River Rats, the mythical boat is here. Just starting the rigging process. But I'm taking out the kayak for one big reason. The old uh, jet lower unit is not here yet. So it'll start, it'll run, but it won't go anywhere. And we're still waiting on that with no definitive ETA. But I'm going fishing, so let's go. River rats, I'm not gonna lie, it's great to be on the water. It's kind of like anytime you have something bothering you, you can come out here and it's like, it's gone. No big deal, nothing to worry about. As far as the boat goes, yeah, I got a boat, so I'm gonna fish out of a boat, but I'm also gonna fish out of a kayak, I'm also gonna fish off a bank. Whatever puts fish on the hook, because honestly, there's times where of all those three things, one is better than the other, and it's not, it's not always the same one thing. But right now, I'm hoping kayak's the best way to catch them, because that's what I have. And then later tonight, I hopefully fish off the bank's the best way to catch them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I might fish out of the kayak a little bit longer. I don't know. So many options, none of them bad. I just need to get baits in the water. Can't catch them if you don't have baits in the water. That's a guarantee I make. I don't make guarantees in fishing. I guess I kind of just did. I make one guarantee in fishing. If you want to know what my absolute favorite bait for flatheads is, it's not bullheads. I do like bullheads a lot. And honestly, I'll take whatever bait I can get, but that guy. The old green sunfish kind of have uh, Napoleon syndrome. But they just keep kicking. They're not as tough as a bullhead, but for whatever reason, I seem to get bit more on them. They're just tough. They're tough on a hook. They're tough in a bait tank. They're easy to catch if you can find them. If you find them, they're easy to catch. They're easy to keep alive, and they're easy to keep alive and lively. So it's one thing to have a bait that's alive. It's another to have one that's lively. And lively is what gets bit. So hopefully I'll get bit here. And if not, that's okay. So then I'll try another spot, another spot. Give them 10 minutes. See what happens. Get eaten, dude. I had one get hit and it, it hit funny. It was like, doo -doo -doo, and then ran at me to the side kind of. And then line came tight and the hook popped out of his mouth. But who knows what that was. Yeah, something messing with me. Most likely of the uh, channel rat variety. It's not, oh. Yeah, when they start going and let go and then come back. Maybe small flathead? It's a small flathead, he's dinner. He's a channel cat, he's dinner. My sunfish is very dead, unfortunately. Yeah, time to move. <laughs> Well, he's not very dead, but he's very beat up. He's been in several fish's mouths, scraping the scales off of him and stuff. It's a rough world down there. He's still kicking because sunfish are tougher than nails. <laughs> On to the next spot. All right, I guess the only thing left to do is wait for a bite. I'm pretty good at that. So I got some pretty solid scenery. I think I've said pretty. I don't know how many times I've said pretty. At least we're, we're at least up to four, maybe five times. But uh, I'm pretty good at sitting around waiting for a bite. So I vote that's what we do. Hopefully it won't be that long. Got him. <laughs> Ain't bad. Get big, dude. It might be a meter too. Uh, borderline. Thanks, bud. He's hooked kind of deep, even. 
He's releasable. He's got a hole in his mouth. Like he's been on somebody's stringer. Weird. Definitely a little eater right there. I, I don't know. You can't ask for much better than that, honestly. He's probably like, I don't know, seven, eight pounds, something like that. He's also breakfast and probably lunch and dinner. Well, I eat a lot, so these will be the only two I keep. Hopefully I get a few more tonight, but uh, if not, I'm going to leave here pretty dang happy. All right, hang out, guys. Now the only thing we need is a big one. This a real fish? Is he going to take it down or... I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Oh, that's more solid and less solid. Well, this is dead bait, so there's definitely something alive on the end. It's acting like flathead. We have little flathead number three of the evening. This is testing my patience to like the maximum degree. snagged and also on there at the same time pull it off of there oh I feel something solid what is going on come on get off of there he got himself out it's very generous of him what are you uh, little flathead number three, and he's like snagged. <laughs> well, you can't keep a foul hooked fish, unfortunately. He's hooked right there. I don't know. I'm sure he went after it, but I don't know. I like to play by the rules, and you know, I got two. I don't need three. But it was nice of him to work himself out. That's two on cut bait and two little guys on cut bait, and a better one on live bait. But either way, it's action. And can't ask for much more than that, especially flathead fishing. Man, they're perfect eater. It's okay. Got two. I'm going to eat some for breakfast and the rest of it. I'm going to eat for lunch or dinner some other time. Go grow up and get really big. See ya. Back out there for a little while before I put some new chunks on. Huh? All right, recap. I just woke up and went to check these to see if I had any bait. And uh, this guy never pulled the clicker off. Another wonderful eating specimen. Oh, there's a spider. Hopefully... Easy does it, champ. He's so deep. Yeah, this guy never even pulled any clicker off, didn't pull any line off the reel, and I have a line counter, so that's kind of how I know, because I remember what it was before I went to sleep. But he's gut hooked, so I guess I will add him to the pile for tomorrow morning. I probably won't eat him tomorrow morning. I guess he'll probably go in the fr fridge and We'll have something to eat for down the road. Morning. Oh, yeah. This is crack of dawn. Survived the evening, evening without turning into a popsicle, which is good. Unless you want to be a popsicle, then it wouldn't be as good. But, uh, we'll go get the buttheads clean. <laughs> Probably drink some caffeine. Got my flathead cooker buried real nice. Bullhead's freaking out. I might have a flathead on one of them rods, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Which is the reason I am up at 6.15 in the morning. Otherwise, there'd be a real possibility of me not being awake. Fortunately for me, I don't have to be in a hurry at this very moment. So, um, let's see if one of these guys gets thumped. And then we'll eat. 
Yeah, he definitely got hit by something. See the scrape marks down the side. Very feisty channel cat. Yeah, just got him behind the, the pet fins. Bummer. I think it's about that time. Probably the most essential part of a camping trip is the next morning. I did slip a little bit. Forgot my toothbrush. Sorry to anybody I run into on the way home. It wasn't on purpose. I feel like I could take on the world now. now. I just need to take on flaying some flatheads. What a beautiful place. Little Iowa beauty that most people don't even realize is here. Including a lot of Iowans. Iowa pretty much looks the same. Except the rivers that carve up the landscape and make things different. Expose what's underneath. Peels back the layers. Getting pretty philosophical. It's amazing what one drink of caffeine will do to you. Okay. Check out the, the spoils of our labor, if you want to call this labor. Uh, you know, really, not much to complain about. Four flathead night, kept, uh, kept three of them. One because it was, I was only gonna keep two, but one was gut hooked, so. If you're gonna keep one, you might as well keep a gut hooked one. A lot of them will survive anyway, but the odds definitely drop. I'm gonna get these clean. Probably only I'm gonna fry up some and take some home and have a wonderful lunch and dinner. And I always let the big ones go, but I don't think there's anything wrong with keeping flatheads this size. I mean, they uh, these are the youngest fish. These are the best ones for you because they have the least amount of uh, contaminants in them. And I don't know. I wouldn't say they necessarily taste better, but they got that stuff going for them. All right. Got those flatheads dismantled. Cut them into little chunks because they got, they're pretty watery. They hold a lot of water. So if you want them to fry up real nice and crisp, cut them into smaller chunks and it seems to work a lot better. Got them marinating in some Frank's Red Hot. And this is like the prime rib of the flathead. This is all belly meat. So if I'm gonna eat some while I'm out here, I'm going to uh, take the prime stock. Gotta bread them though. Time to get everything else set up. Got some tortillas. These are kind of beat up and moist. Everything is moist out here today. And where's my tongs? I don't know where my tongs are. This could get interesting. No tongs. And broke my spoon and my fork. Hmm, oh, bummer. Let's get her started. There she goes. Supremely enjoy that sound. It's gonna get hot, it's gonna get hot fast. It's reasonably level. Ask for much more than that out here is probably asking for a lot, so take what I can get. It's almost sunglasses time. Well, almost, it's definitely sunglasses time. Yeah, this is, this is uh, definitely gonna be interesting with my one little fork to flip them with. <laughs> don't know if you could ask for much better of a breakfast than what this is gonna be. Assuming I don't burn my fingertips off because uh, trying to flip them with a piece of a plastic fork. Yeah. At least I have some instrument to do this. Imagine doing, trying to do this with your fingers. So I could always use a sway knife. If it came down to it. Oh, it's hot. Oh. The fork's melting. Guess I will be using a filet knife. That's probably not healthy. It's reasonably clean. Clean enough for this environment. Or reasonably clean. There's lots of times asking a lot. Well, we got them burning. Put in. Oops. They won't be everything they could have been, but they'll still be 
pretty phenomenal and they'll still get eaten which is all that really matters I guess considering I'm the only one eating them nice part about cooking for yourself really gotta please make it good enough for you last round ah, splash myself I'm gonna warm up these tortillas just a smidge I'm gonna be hanging out in the burn up stuff but whatever heat them up make them a little more pliable Getting consistent heat while cooking in the outdoors might be one of the most difficult things in my life. But I guess if that's my biggest problem, I'm doing pretty good. Let's grab a couple pieces and check this out. They look pretty decent. Yep, there is the final product. Let's find out if it's edible. I bet it is. Oh, my hands are gross. One bite, then I'll wash them. Tough to beat flathead. I didn't do a very good job of cooking it. It's still really good. All right, well, I'm just gonna eat this and I'll wash my hands. My hands aren't clean, but they are definitely cleaner. I have to wash all this stuff down when I get home, but hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did hit the like button, if you wanna see more like it, hit the subscribe button. Um, if you want to, you can go check out my podcast. It's on Spotify. It's a River Certified Podcast. A lot of uh, people making fun of me and uh, some pretty good stories to go along with it. It's a good time. It really is. Uh, if you like fun, I highly recommend checking out the podcast. It's the River Certified Podcast. Anyway, seriously, thank you for watching. It means a lot. Hope you catch a giant.